Dear brothers and sisters, and all Africans across the diaspora, we proudly welcome you to another intellectual presentation from His Excellency, the Jedi. What's up, everybody? This is the Jedi. I'm back again, you guys. I'm back again because this issue is really biting my ass in places I didn't even know I had. Do you understand me? But it's necessary for me to do another piece because I found something that drives home what I'm saying is the whole reason for this dust up over Colin Kaepernick. <clears throat> this is about the denunciation of black life, everybody. Black life, black suffering, black genocide, black murder, kind of redundant. Black struggle, black legitimacy. This is about denouncing that. Denouncing that. And because we don't have voices, white voices, screaming from the mountaintop to denounce this racism, we must assume there are none. That is the logical deduction. That there are no good voices. Do you understand me? Um, I have seen the Nike commercial now. I'm pretty sure everybody's probably seen it. I was I actually started with this shot because I was going to say I'm linking it. I'm not linking it. Like all you do is think it and it'll pop up on your screen. Like it is the topic. So I'm sure you'll find it. Plus when I link stuff nobody ever... Um, follows up on it you know I've tested my audience many times over the years it'll be something that's important and I'll go I'm linking the video and then I deliberately don't link it and I never see a comment saying Jedi where's the video where's the video so I'm not wasting my time I don't need to all right I just don't need to but here is our central piece when I'm done with this video there should be no question in the mind of anybody that's listening to me that this doesn't have anything to do with Nike but yet it does and I'll be able to dispense of why they matter very quickly but it should be clear in the minds of everyone who's listening to me that this is absolutely about the disregard and the denunciation of black life. I always tell you there's a pathology for everything. Nothing just becomes. Everything in life has a pathology. Everything. Everything. And so this is no different. <clears throat> you see the pathology on this goes back to 1619. When you have these conquerors bringing African bodies here in the bellies of ships to work for free labor. You must remember they have had already killed off over 139 million native people that were already here. Seems to me if I show up someplace and there's a crowd, I didn't really discover it. I just kind of found out about it. But because they write the history it always glorifies them as the old African proverb says until the lions tell their tale the story of the hunt will always glorify the hunter and this is prophetic of these people I don't know when that was written and who said it it's an old African proverb but clearly the ancestors knew of the existence 
of someone who would do that. So it begins in 1619. And there was a disregard for black life. It was property, and that's it. Fast forward 2018, it's still property. We're going to be going back and forth. 1619, 2018. We're going to be going back and forth. We're doing time travel in this video. We're doing it. We're doing it. So this disregard for black life. Even when they allowed you to fight in their battles. We won't ever call it wars because there's never been a war fought by these people. It's always a vicious aggression on someone else who they can overpower. And it's usually for something materialistic and resources and power, you see. They never mess with anybody that will punch them in their face. This is why North Korea can just wave their nuclear weapons every week. Look, we have it. We're testing it. We're testing Look, oh, look. Is that a nuclear bomb I have? Oh, my God. Is that a rocket I'm testing? Oh, my God. And they sit over here and blow their hot air, but they don't do anything. Because they're only cowards, and they only pick on those who they think they can overpower. That's it. That's it. And so, in any of their aggressions that they allowed us to fight in, we were the first to die because we were human shields because remember black life does not matter black life does not matter and so we move again back to 2016 we saw the venomous vitriolic violent reaction they had to the simple phrase black lives matter now the reaction was if you you saw somebody you know if you say you have something really hot like really hot and you pour like cold water on it and there's and those bubbles start flying at you the hot bubbles and it starts steaming and like that's the visual that's the visual or if you've ever seen thermate burning like very quickly through steel I want you to have that visual because we need something very um, violent and ferocious but this is the reaction we saw to the simple phrase black lives matter but what we didn't clearly perceive at that time was that their reaction was so visceral because in their minds a black life doesn't matter and how dare you say that how dare you say that like it was a high blasphemy high crimes and treason to speak those words but we didn't perceive that at the time we just knew they were coming with this dumb well all lives matter as if they were too retarded to understand what the phrase meant based on the events the daily and minute by minute events that were happening right in front of their eyes and being broadcast around the world stay with me on this everybody because this is the analogy and the true identity of the psychology of a people and why it matters to us and we have a vested interest in this is because we live in this nation this nation and they are very dangerous not just to us but to all humanity the actions the events surrounding just this Nike ad show something very dark and demonic do you understand very evil very evil and chief among it is not just the dismissal of black life but the violent reaction to anyone giving it validity let us move on so now you have black lives matter come along and we see their reaction to that and then it was well blue lives matter but the only people proclaiming this was white people I'm over trying to figure out who's a racist and who's not and if there's good white people. I'm over that. 
All zebras are the same to me. All giraffes are the same to me. So shall be the case with this. I'm not going to waste my time trying to delineate between the two as I go through this. I don't, I don't need to waste my life like that. I'm making affirmative statements based on intelligent observations right in front of me. The writing is on the wall. I'm just reading it. Then now, there's such a fervor. You had the basketball team come out with the Black Lives Matter t-shirts on and that pissed them off because again, this was acknowledging black life and for them it's like throwing holy water on a vampire or cold water on hot steel or that thermate I was telling you about. This vitriolic reaction, violent. This also answers for us why we saw such a, a, the same venom and evil towards Michael Vick going back. They go all around the world killing for sport. Even since the orange tulip has been in office, his son and one of the other devils was in Africa hunting for sport. You see? They hunt for sport. Shooting animals with guns like coward bitches. You want to hunt? You go up and wrestle that animal to the ground and you'll get my applause. But you standing back with some high-powered technical fucking device and you're going to shoot? Come on. That, you're, you're a bitch. You're not a hunter. You're a bitch. That's how I define it. Damn it. But Michael Vick fights dogs. And in many parts of the country there's been cockfighting that has gone on forever. Everybody knows about cockfighting even, even if they never saw it. Excuse me. Even they never saw it. Remember even in, uh, what was it, 12 Years a Slave? That may not be the movie, just some slave movie. I feel like it was, I don't know y'all, it could have been Roots. The new one that they did of Roots. And remember he would he had a way with the birds and he would the the white devil master would take him from you know plantation to plantation to fight these birds and they'd be winning and all of it you see so this goes back Michael Vick fights dogs I don't know how old Michael Vick was then in fact I don't even know how old he is now I'm gonna find out just so I can make this point it's very important let me ask the whore How old is Michael Vick? Michael Vick is 38. Okay, he's 38. So he was younger than that when he when he went through all this bullshit about these dogs. All right. And incidentally, I never you guys know I'm not a sports fan. I don't know these people. They don't owe me money. They don't hang out with me. I'm over it. So I didn't know Michael Vick until that scandal, you know. And I just didn't know anything about him. But I immediately related to it because I am from the south side of Chicago and my brothers and some of the other dudes in the neighborhood used to fight dogs in the middle of the street. That's what you did. You see what I'm saying? And the occasional car that came through, you know, you move out the street. They fighting dogs. The girls over there doing double dutch. Somebody else is doing hopscotch. You feel me? Festive. So I couldn't understand even then, like, why is this? And then I saw white people again that's the common thread through all of this white people nobody else is having this reaction no Arabs no Asians that's all Asians so I don't have to name them <laughs> no Arabs no Asians no Latinos uh, certainly no African people no other peoples on the earth are have their their underwear up around their ass other than white people on this as we did with as they did with Michael Vick that's why I'm citing this now I saw white fucking women tearing up season tickets and denouncing it over a dog everybody stay with me a dog because we know historically as African people we're clear they've always valued animal life over black life again because black life does not matter and anybody suggesting it sends them into 
a fury. Stay with me. So Michael Vick, and I had to see this brother going in and out of court every damn day, and what I was most impressed by was how stoic he looked and clean and how tailored his suits were. I was most impressed with him. Most impressed. He made me proud. You know, even if even at that time I didn't understand all of what was going on and why. I just couldn't get my mind around it. Like, why is this a problem? Why is this a problem? But alas, what we saw in that is that he became the worst person on the planet Earth. And what we see echoed in that as we see in the Kaepernick thing and other things I'm going to cite for you. What they have in common is they want the person completely destroyed. Like death threats. They don't want you to ever have a job. They don't want you to ever have any place to live. I'm not exaggerating. This is not fun and games everybody. I'm serious as the heart beating in my chest right now. Understand that. They don't want you to have a car. They don't want you to have a place to live. They want you completely destitute living under a cardboard box. And they don't even want you to have that cardboard box. They want you destroyed. That's how much this is an offense to them. For anyone to validate black life. It incenses them. They want that person destroyed. And we heard the same echoes with Michael Vick. They don't. He he shouldn't be allowed to do this, and he shouldn't be allowed to do that, and he shouldn't be allowed, and he shouldn't be allowed. And I didn't hear any white voices then either saying back up off of Michael Vick. We never see that. And when we look through history, we never see a counterforce to the evil ones coming out of their out of their people so we must assume they all agree we must we must I see four zebras rock past me separately over maybe a 15 minute period I go well they must all be zebras then that must all be well they must all be in their psychotic mind you're supposed to call one of them a giraffe and the other one like a pony or something or like a you know, an iguana or something. I'm not being funny. I'm being very serious. Because this is how they think. And it's clear as day. And what I'm bringing you in this article is going to prove everything that I'm laying out in this foundation. So just hear me. <clears throat> so they want the person completely destroyed. Now, one can argue about whether or not OJ was guilty. But because once again, white racism was injected in that and they tried to make it seem like it was Johnny Cochran, which it wasn't. They're always the ones with ketchup on their face while pointing at somebody else. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. They deliberately ignored the biggest racist ever known to humanity, Mark Furman who had all the history on him could prove that he was a fucking racist and oh by the way I don't know if I ever told you guys this but Vanity told me that he had pulled her over before and had flirted with her and sort of mini stalked her maybe I should do a video about that wow anyway and then there he was asserting his fifth amendment privilege on the stand on international television and every single African person looking at that television knew he was a fucking racist before they even told us he was we knew it already we knew it we could smell it on him it was glowing on him like a stain but they ignored that my point is they once again wanted a black boogeyman to direct their anger at black life existing upon so they could say all those things about that individual but that's how they feel about all our black ass man woman and unborn child this is how they feel about us so OJ had to become the worst person on earth they didn't give a damn about those people that were killed 
And if they have the capacity for thought, which I don't know, I don't know. That's my truth. I don't know that. But if they have the capacity for thought, they knew that that trial ended exactly the way it should have based on the law. But in their minds, there was too many black people on that jury. And because of all the, the centuries of them, their white juries railroading us unjustly, they figured they were getting their just to do and they didn't like it. And it was coming from black life. Stay with me. This is the ball of anger that surrounds why they turn beet red when you mention OJ. And certainly if you dare to say, well, OJ's innocent. He didn't do it. I was there. I saw him. He didn't do it. Yeah, I, he, he, he didn't do it. I seen OJ. I, I seen him like as the murder was happening, we were across town someplace having lattes and I, it wasn't OJ. Oh my God, their head blows up and rolls off the stalk. But this is why. Do you understand? And it's compounded in that case because even they don't care about the victims, just the fact that it was white life. That there was even an insinuation that black life had taken white life is what has them furious to this day as I speak. We were over OJ after the verdict. Like that day before midnight, every, we were done with it. Black folks were over it. They are still not over it. Because they wanted blood, as they always do. Japanese government pisses them off. They go and drop two atomic bombs. One on the city of, of Hiroshima, one on the city of Nagasaki. So all those people were their enemy? But they're the same ones that will say, well, you can't say all white people are bad. Well, you apparently thought all the Japanese were bad. You apparently thought all the natives, the 139 million, were bad. I can keep going. Don't approach me. Don't. Because I'm sharp as a tack. Don't touch. So he had to be, and they wanted him completely destroyed. This is why they gave him, the, 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 they gave those Goldman people that number that monetary number in their judgment and then what did the white devil judge come back and do years later after the Las Vegas theme gave him that amount of time of that judgment it's on purpose because they all hate black life period and they're signaling to each other we are in collusion and they don't give a damn if you can make the tie up and see it that's how blatant and desperate they are now at this chapter in history Then now, Bill Cosby, he's their new OJ. Because we found out for every one Bill Cosby, there was 10,000 white devil ass men out there doing unspeakable acts to men and women. But no, no, Bill Cosby has to be the worst person on the earth because he is a black life. And nothing soothes them greater than destroying black life in any manner possible. Hear me. I'm clear about this shit. Do you understand me? My voice is going, but work with me. So he had to be the worst person. And they want him destroyed. What did we see immediately? Take his shows off. He hadn't been on forever. It's in syndication around the world. Take the show off. Because they want him destroyed. They want him destroyed. Meanwhile, we allow George Zimmerman to kill our precious Trayvon Martin and we're not out seeking to destroy this motherfucker. Because we're not the savage beast that they are. Even though, even in the eyes of the divine, we would be righteous in our pursuit. But that's another video. I digress. Michael Joseph Jackson the greatest entertainer the world has ever known and the most famous human being ever witnessed by civilization statement of truth period Michael was the most pious kind-hearted 
person we've ever seen articulated in public life. There's other Michael Jacksons out there, but they're not famous. He was impeccable. They raided his, his Neverland ranch and they found a man whose lifestyle was clean. Anything that they found, they had to create and plant. Or it was stuff, because Michael's the most famous human being ever known to civilization, people sent him bags of mail. Bags of mail. Bags of mail. But now, when Michael, because jealousy plays a role too, we're dealing with black life. No black life is allowed to be greater than white life. So he's one of the greatest. He's like Elvis and the Beatles. No, bitch. The Elvis and the Beatles wish they had a career like Michael Jackson. Let us understand the facts. But that burned them. You must understand the psychology of the people you're dealing with. You understand? Because in warfare even, one of the rules of engagement is you got to study your damn enemy. You see? Are they tall? Are they short? Do they eat? Do they like women? Do they like men? You see? What do they eat for breakfast? You see, you have to know all these things. How good are they at chess and checkers and cards and you, you every detail? You've got to know it. You see? So, they started with the anti-Semitic crap that fell flat and failed. Because the tactics that they use on most people that they try and bring down didn't work on Michael because he was the most famous human being ever known to civilization. Even prophets from God cannot make the claim. That's real. That's real. So that fell flat and failed. But before that, they started with the wacko jacko and it was, you know, he's everything but a human. When all he was was a brilliant human being intensely gifted by the divine sent for a purpose on the earth to touch all of humanity in every corner of the earth and he carried out that mission well done Michael Joseph Jackson well quick he's a child molester then he's always around kids goes back to war you find out everything about your opponent your enemy or your invented enemy to find out what their Achilles heel is. What's their weakness? Everybody on the planet knew that Michael loved children. Quick, he's a child molester. And it wasn't the benevolence of white people that happened in that Santa Barbara courtroom of why Michael was found completely not guilty by an all-white jury in an all-white county. That was the hand of the divine. White people had nothing to do with that. Let us be clear. That was the hand of the divine. So that fell flat. But what we saw is, even after he was found not guilty, they still spoke in their white media as if he was guilty. Because why? He must be destroyed. Because this is the black life that's getting on their nerves. And so they don't want you to just go away. They want you completely destroyed. Destroyed. Now, fast forward to Colin Kaepernick. Who also, by the way, I had no idea who he was before all of this. Much like the Michael Vick thing. I didn't know him. Did not know him. But there he was blazing onto my radar with righteousness courage and a backbone of course that's going to get the eye of the Jedi what? somebody doing what needs to be done? finally? at least doing what they can showing that they're willing to do something instead of just the go along house negroes 
immediately impressed with this brother. Immediately. But now, we were in the zenith of visible, knowable police murders of African people. Because remember, for everyone that we know about, it's probably about 20 that we don't know about. This is a big country. And there's a lot of white devil-ass police out there doing a lot of evil. And you're not going to see all of them. So we saw a percentage. And so when it was at its zenith, <clears throat> this is when you had the unrest in Baltimore. You had the unrest in um, Ferguson. But before we get there, let's go back again with black life. Because remember, there was a little, not a little, there was a major, major hurricane that happened. And the sister's name was Katrina. They showed us then what they're showing you right now. And what began in 1619, there that is again. We don't give a damn about black life. And we want it destroyed. Because we don't have you in chains now. So if we can't make a dollar off of you, we want you completely annihilated and destroyed. And your life doesn't matter. Remember, they flew over people on their roof saying, please help us. It was days or weeks or something before Bush flew over. They created these myths at the Superdome about these violent rapes and shootings and attacks like we're just these savage people. When the only savage on this goddamn earth is them. Projection, my people. I'll say you're the one that's cheating when I'm the one that's got five bitches lined up every night. Oh, it's you. You're cheating. Hmm? When I got a pocket full of jimmies ready to get my thing on. But it's you that's cheating. Projection. And then they wouldn't let you walk over that bridge. Then the hand of God came in. And we saw one of these Fox News dudes. His name almost came to me. Deep voice. Anyway. He was on the bridge saying over there is safety and, and supplies and water and electricity and all this thing. And they won't let them walk over this bridge to safety. And they had armed guards on the bridge that shot some of our people and turned us back to that fucking Superdome. These people don't give a fuck about your life. And the death nail in the coffin of the most famous human being that ever walked for civilization was when he made a song called, They Don't Care About Us. Because he was telling you what I'm telling you right now. They don't give a damn about you. This is real. So when moments like this happen, you need to videotape the shit. Because it's almost like seeing a four-leaf clover happen in front of you. It's so rare. But it's not so rare anymore now. Because the mask has been off ever since the Associated Press said we're now projecting that Senator Barack Obama will be President of the United States. The mask came off. Less than 24 hours after he said, so help me God. You had millions of them across this country Suddenly there was this brand new thing called a tea party extremely organized overnight and they wanted their country back and Then you had their other white minions in the damn fucking White House saying whatever he says We're gonna say no to it because why that's black life and They want it annihilated and destroyed Barack Obama had more death threats than all previous presidents 
combined daily from these people, white people, nobody else, not Arabs, not Asians, not Latinos, not black people, not anything else, white people. This is who's keeping up all of the strife. Do you understand? You don't get rid of a cold until you get rid of the virus. And then you'll feel better. But I digress. So, we're at the zenith of the murder of our people. You couldn't even keep track of the names. It was every damn day. I literally would be in production on a video about a shooting and troops would send me two more. Jedi, did you hear about this one? It was another one over here. What the? You can't even keep up. And the white community was silent. And they were only loud when they were screaming all lives matter and blue lives matter because for them it was a contest they weren't saying that like we're supposed to be included too they were like no your life doesn't matter and ours does while they were saying the exact opposite they meant what I just told you stay with me It's the only time we heard them. Or when they would bitch that how dare they're burning down their own neighborhoods as if they gave a fuck. As if they gave a damn. But silence. And the one or two out there marching in Ferguson and Baltimore and every place else with their little backpacks, those are spies, under poli undercover police, and just fucking drug addicts. Those weren't allies, and they don't give a damn about your black ass either. Period. They've always been present. You go back and look at marches of Dr. King, you see a few of them speckled in there. Why are they there? Well, I know why they're there. Hmm? I know why they're there. They killed off Dr. King because he was beginning to say that black lives mattered. When he was speaking out against the Vietnam War, those are people of color damn near close to ours, quite frankly, the, Vietnam, the Vietnamese. How dare he say black lives matter? Even though he had kept us off their ass, they still killed him. Because why? Black life doesn't matter, and to even suggest it sends them into a tailspin. That's the truth. That's the truth. So now, Colin Kaepernick comes along, and he's had enough. And he's not all steeped in consciousness, because his life has taken him on a certain path. A lot of his time has been devoted to athletics and studying athletics and things like that. So not a whole lot of time to be sitting around watching Freedom Road documentaries and things, you see. And I appreciated that he uh, was willing to display the fact that he didn't know a whole lot of what he, but he knew there was a lot that he didn't know. And he knew he had some catching up to do. That was one of the other things that impressed me about him. You see, and he's a king on top of that. He's 6'4". And then that afro probably makes him another 10 feet tall. And it's just wild and defiant, and I love it. That also pissed them off. 
the afro because many of them were probably thinking he's he's well he's 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 half white or he's mixed or or he's just something they could have in their fantasy then the afro came out and it was like undisputed this is a brother pure at the end you don't get that nappy afro unless you're a brother pure at the end it just don't happen so sorry that was also upsetting after the fact I'm getting ahead of myself so what does he do he sits down for the national anthem now so that you understand clearly what we're talking about here everybody he could have sat down to protest cancer that would have been fine they would have been saying my god I just think it's so fine what he's doing you he would have heard all their white asses they would have been putting microphones in every one of their fucking bitch ass faces he could have been protesting uh, gorillas he could have been protesting anything you could imagine but they didn't give a damn from Trayvon Martin to Mike Brown to Eric Garner to Sandra Bland to, I'm not gonna start naming all the names we'll be here another five hours just naming victims that's real they didn't give a damn about that and it was an annoyance to them that they had to see any of the coverage on TV because why do I have to see this it's just a black life stop the video when I lie and now Colin Kaepernick does the most blasphemous most heretic thing you could do in a white racist devil as society you would dare to try to make us acknowledge our murder of you you must be destroyed but because they still have that coward element suddenly they love the flag so much and how dare he disrespect the flag huh disregarding the fact that no African person should ever fucking uh, acknowledge that bitch you understand because it is our swast it is the equivalent of our swastika flag for our holocaust you understand we were protesting the confederate flag this bitch needs to go with it too because we were oppressed and are oppressed under both of them they are equally the same and indeed our swastika of our holocaust so it wasn't about that and they don't care about you but what they hate more than anything even if they have a sign on that says racist they don't want you to say it that's the worst thing you can call them it's a racist because now they've been identified ooh the lights on you the stink bomb the green is coming from you bitch it's you you see even after they tried to claim it was the veterans first it was the flag now it's the veterans then you had veterans saying no no we fought for all this shit like we cool <laughs> we cool he has a right to do that and set your ass down but they want him destroyed so that's not enough then we got the military dude that said it's probably more proper to take a knee etc etc and he did that respectfully again he's never shot anybody unfortunately he's never punched anybody unfortunately he hasn't blown anything up he hasn't given anybody the finger he hasn't called anybody out of their name he hasn't threatened anybody he hasn't done anything He has been the Christ child through all of this. But that doesn't matter. Because he's trying to legitimize those black lives that we've killed and continue to kill. And we love doing it and we we'll give a fuck about him. And we already have our white grand juries and our white media and our white judges in place to be sure that our fucking murderers don't have anything happen to them once we've murdered your black ass and you're ruining the cycle you're turning the light of legitimacy on your death and it's not legitimate and you must be destroyed stay with me 
So they're always all in collusion. Like I say, where are the good ones? Where are the good ones? Where was the white NFL executive come out and say, you know what? To hell with all this bullshit. We're here to play a, a, a football game. We don't care if people stand, sit, or vomit for the damn uh, national anthem. That's not really part of the game. We're here to play a game. If you don't like it, then don't come to our game. And storm off the fucking dais. That would have been gangster. But it'll never happen. Because there's white collusion. Like I said, it doesn't matter what uniform they wear, what their position is in the society. It could be the bitch that works at Walmart. It could be the bitch at the bank. It could be the motherfucking airline pilot. It doesn't matter. It's all of them. Until they show us something else. It's all of them. It's all of them. Because that's what they think about us. Because in 2018, you still have people saying, you know, you just, if people just get together and get around black people, just get to know us. Bitch, you brought us here and we've been here since 16 fucking 19. You don't know us by, by now? Because you don't want to. Don't want to. They didn't want him to have another job. Because he must be destroyed for trying to legitimize dead black bodies. The sympathy for dead black bodies. He's trying to, to legitimize sympathy and attention for dead black bodies that our white asses have murdered. And we don't like that. He must be destroyed. So he couldn't get a job. Then the hand of God... Because he already had a contract, as we learned in the previous video, that was coming up for renewal or renegotiation. And that's how this ad came about. It's the hand of Allah. And they're pissed off because like Michael Vick, like OJ, like Michael Jackson, like Bill Cosby, like a whole bunch of other people I'm not naming because I can't think of their ass. They want them destroyed. This is how sick they are. But notice, we didn't hear any seeking the total destruction of Harvey Weinstein. You think Bill Cosby they could have just changed the name of the show and still aired it in syndication? But they could change the name of the Weinstein company and keep doing business. Stop the video when I start lying. You see? Because as ugly and fucked up as he looks and no bitch would want him he's still white that's a white life Harvey Weinstein hmm? there he is oh the picture of elegance if I've ever seen it clearly the picture of elegance clearly it's who I aspire to be <laughs> it's who I aspire to be So how dare Nike give him legitimacy? Because now another element is in play. They don't like to lose. They're the only people on earth obsessed with being number one and being the leader and being the owner and the one that runs everything and all of it. Again, they're the ones that have 175 bases across the earth military bases nobody's got a, a, a base in this bitch they always talk about Americans America's exceptionalism like it's just exceptional from everything else on the earth they call their president the leader of the free world this is an arrogant people obsessed with self-aggrandizement are you with me you must understand this you must understand the psychological pathology of this demon in order to understand what is in front of you and understand the entire context of this whole fucking Colin Kaepernick Nike ad. It requires this dissertation. Now. Damn it, he's going to have a job. Oh. They just legitimized those damn black lives that we wish would rot in hell. Quick, go kill some more. And you may see an escalation in police shootings from this day on. 
I'm just saying. You may see a re-escalation of police shootings covering the evening news. We pray Allah that will not be the case and that he will frustrate these demons at every turn. So this is about annihilation of a man. Annihilation of a man because he would dare to want to legitimize black life. And now this is about to back up every damn thing I've said to you. This whore is the wife of a slain Navy SEAL, and notice how they put that in capital letters, has scathing response to Nike's Colin Kaepernick ad campaign. Now before I read anything, I will tell you she's really scathing at this black man. Nike is kind of uh, a side piece. They're just kind of like a slap on the wrist. It's kind of like you're all co-conspirators and one of them almost lets out the conspiracy and you're like, damn it, didn't I tell you? But your goal is still on your victim. That's where Nike's role is in all this, you see. Plus, they're very, very rich and powerful, you see. Pay no attention to the stock numbers and all these things. This matters not. This is a brand that has been around for decades. And as someone who is very good in business, I can tell you this is a solid brand that will be in business as long as they want to be. Because they've been through every storm that you could have in a business environment. And they have come through. You understand? Nike ain't going nowhere till they decide to. Be clear about that. Be clear. This whole, their stocks are falling, is just to assuage the little pitiful band of angry ass white people that wish they would suddenly just be destroyed because how dare they give legitimacy to a black life. It's okay that black people buy sneakers and kill each other over them. They're fine with that because they get a coin and they get to, and, and more black life gets to go away from the earth. They love that. It's a win-win. But we can't have black life being celebrated and being given the coin. That's why you saw in the previous video, the motherfucker in Florida in a goddamn uh, thunderstorm where the fuck he was out there in. I thought he was going to have a damn heart attack on camera. But he is the embodiment and the antithesis or the quintessence, I'm sorry, of the anger they are feeling over black life. Black life. In fact, let's see. Damn it, damn mic. Let's see this dude again, just to remind us, because again, this is the quintessence of the expression of the anger we're talking about in this video. See, hear this now. Here I am in Florida during a fucking tropical storm and Nike done pissed me the fuck off. Look. By the way, that's off brand. It ain't Kingsford Edge. Shade. Burn, motherfuckers. And them shoes look old as shit. Do you understand? These ones right here look like it was worn by Moses the Lawgiver. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Hear this. Look. Tropical storm standing out in the rain. Find out M Nike hires Colin Caper Dick for their Just Do It campaign. So I'm just going to do it. I'm going to burn all my fucking Nikes. Been wearing nothing but Nikes for 37 motherfucking... Again, a peaceful man who dared to kneel in the name of righteousness. Only a demonic entity would have this reaction. Let us see the rest of this clip. In years, and I'll never wear another goddamn pair as long as I live. Go fuck yourselves. And Colin Kaepernick can go fuck himself too. Burn. Fucking burn. Burn. 
You like that shit, Nike? Yep, go fuck yourselves. I've so had it with you liberal motherfuckers, I cannot wait for this motherfucking war to kick off so we can fuck your sorry asses up. Now, that's code. Liberal is the new nigga. You see? That's essentially what he's saying there. This liberal and leftist and all that stuff. Don't be fooled by that. He hates the fuck out of African people. And that's what he's expressing here. Because they hired that fucking, what was his words? Colin Kaepernick. Actually, they hired that ne'er to be a part of that. How da You see? You got to translate. You must speak. Racist white devil. It's a special course. I've so had it with you liberal motherfuckers. I cannot wait for this motherfucking war to kick off so we can. A war to kick off, said this demon. Hmm? Fuck your sorry asses up. Liberal ass motherfucking cocksuckers. And then there's a duality to the word liberal because in some contexts that they use it and it's to some degree when he just used it right there it's it translates to the old what used to be called nigger lover they would call each other if you were sympathetic to blacks or if you helped their cause in any way you see so there's a duality of the word there Language, everybody. Language. We've seen enough. Let us continue. So we enter the historical white bitch now. Hmm? Let's enter her. Does anybody know who she is? I don't. I would have no need. But I always tell you, there's an editor, a writer, and a publisher. And look at the picture they picked of this bitch. Hmm? I'm not, I'm not a woman, but I have had the pleasure of, uh, what's the word I want to use? Scrutinizing. <laughs> we'll use that word. <laughs> Scrutinizing breastuses many times over my lifetime. And I know when some shit just looks like it's stuffed. Like a goddamn it Hot Pocket. You understand? And that's it. But it's also to have this uh, alleged beautiful white woman bullshit going on you see it's that whole play on that you know like ooh which there's no ooh there like there's nothing going on there you understand but that's her ass all right now they allege she has a scathing response to Nike's Colin Kaepernick uh, ad campaign there was no shortage of controversy or angry racist white people after Nike announced Monday that former NFL quarterback and King Colin Kaepernick will become the face of its new advertising campaign due to his ongoing sacrifice quote believe in something even if it means sacrificing everything the ad reads millions of sane people of color applauded the decision while white people, racist white people, rebuked it. And they were the only ones. Thousands of white people have even boycotted the company, burning and trashing their Nike gear. Hmm? That's another sign that this is only white people. Because black folks, is, we ain't burning shit that we buy. That's just not happening. We're not burning it and we're not going to let you burn it. It's not happening period so that's also another tall tale uh, sign that this is white people white racists that are doing this but perhaps no criticism was more pointed I think they mean poignant they meant poignant so I'm saying uh, no criticism was more poignant than that of whoever this bitch is whose husband was Chris somebody the murdered Navy SEAL sharpshooter who dedicated his life to serving on the front lines 
in the war against terror. Wait a minute now. You see, this is why you need the Jedi in such in situations like this, everybody. And I mean that seriously and not in a grandiose way. I just know I'm I know I I I'm just highly aware of my fucking talents and abilities. And I will display that to you now in this little short paragraph. Learn. Now, we see here where this bitch says her husband was murdered. The murdered Navy SEAL sharpshooter. I've already told you that they don't fight any wars. They only aggress on people. So anybody, a part of any branch or any title of their military apparatus in this country is a murderer. Period. Not a hero. Not a hero. Because America doesn't help people. They conquer people and control them. That's the truth. Look at any country that don't have shit they want. You don't see no presence of America anywhere there. That's the fact. And you damn sure won't see no damn military base. You're on your own. So that's first. Goes on and says, who dedicated his life to serving on the front lines, everybody, in the war against terrorism. Well, guess what, bitch? Colin Kaepernick, our king, let's bring his picture back down here so we can all behold our brother, is on the front line of white terrorism upon black life. Get into it. Huh? You see the dissertation I did there? Because the inference is he did something legitimate. He's a Navy and they keep putting in, in bold letters SEAL. Huh? Well, Colin Kaepernick is a black warrior. All capitalized. How about that? I see your Navy SEAL and I raise you black warrior. But let us go on. So we've destroyed that paragraph. What did the heifer say? The bitch wrote in a scathing Facebook post. Because that's what any mature adult does when they have something important to say to the world. Huh? And they're known apparently by the public because they're doing an article on it. They go straight to Facebook. Huh? Just like any kid would go to their crayon box. Scathing Facebook posts. She wrote in the in a, in a post that the notion that Colin, who has not been signed by an NFL team, now she's being catty, as if that's the reason to be pissed off, who's not been signed by an NFL team because of white collusion, in over a year after initiating the league's national anthem protest two years ago, is, quote, sacrificing everything, end quote, to bring attention to police brutality. Here's the line that makes my entire fucking point in this video. Is insulting to those who really have sacrificed everything. What did they just, what the bitch just say in this? For, throw out the whole, he hasn't done it in a year and da 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 da. She says the notion That Kaepernick is sacrificing everything to bring attention to the death of his people at the hands of white devil ass racist fucking police and white devil racist ass grand juries. Huh? And white devil racist ass, uh, uh, what do you call, um, uh, the, the fucking, uh, district attorney, yeah, district attorney. The fact that he would bring attention to the brutal deaths of his people. From Sandra Bland to Alton Sterling to Eric Garner to Von Derrick Myers to Laquan McDonald to I can't name everybody. But let's go back. 
the notion, everybody, keep in mind everything I've just said now, the notion that colon is just even the notion, that word is very important, just even the notion, just if I even think it, the notion that Colin is sacrificing everything to bring and and his career and all of it to bring attention to what should really matter to everybody in this bitch is insulting to white people who feel like they have really sacrificed everything. Are there any questions, class? Are there any questions? The prosecution rests. I began with my foundation. I laid out my summation of the case I produced my discovery evidence and my history. I have brought this before you and I just gave you my closing argument. This paragraph right here speaks to us and speaks for all these fucking racists that are out there burning shit. This is what they think everybody. Think about the insensitivity of that statement. Because let's change some characters in that, in that paragraph just so you can understand it more clearly. The notion that Thelma Rosenberg, a Holocaust survivor, the notion that, what I say her name was? Stella. We'll just say Stella Rosenberg. The notion that Stella Rosenberg is sacrificing everything to bring attention to the Jewish Holocaust is what? Insulting to those who have sacrificed everything. Well, they haven't sacrificed everything because unfortunately your husband was a murderer. A paid murderer. Highly trained, sophisticated and all that. We'll give, we'll give credit to the training of the SEALs and all that. I'm over it. But at the end of the day, Miss Thing, your husband was a murderer. Colin Kaepernick is not a murderer. He's actually fighting for something. Whatever your husband was doing, it was for big corporations and politics and politicians. Huh? <sighs> wow. This paragraph, everybody. Screenshot it, photograph it, whatever you got to do. This is why. This is why. They are up in arms. This is why. Ask yourself. Does this answer the question? Because you see, when you are uh, fact-finding, but when you're problem-solving, you have to understand, what is the problem? What is it? And so what is the equation now that solves that problem? I just gave you the equation. And through that equation, <gasps> I defined for you this vitriolic anger, I've called it. Vitriolic anger, I've called it. I've defined that for you now. And the motivation behind it and thusly showing you the provocation now for these videos you're seeing of these, of these psychotic ass white people burning their fucking Nike shit. As if Nike cares. As if. Like, whatever you're burning, you paid for it. 
unless you live in the hood and you boosted it but you white so you didn't so you pay good money so whatever now Nike already has your money I don't see Nike execs crying in their latte over this I just don't see it I just don't see it now she explained uh oh You want to talk about someone in the NFL sacrificing everything? Pat Tillman. Here you go, everybody. I, I've told if, if you've listened to me for years, you know I always tell you there's this us, them. They will dig up somebody from a thousand years ago just to try to make an, equa an equation to something that you are now. You see? Well, fact of the matter is, dumb bitch, is that Pat Tillman was killed by American the American government they called it first they tried to say it was killed by the enemy but his family pressed because they wanted them to be the heroic family and he looks like the all-american thing and the family wasn't going for it there's a whole documentary and television shows have been done on this this death of this Pat Tillman dude you understand they killed him and then they wanted to say it was friendly fire. Or first they said it was enemy fire, but they didn't want to admit it was friendly fire. But then we have evidence it wasn't really friendly fire. It was friendly, but on purpose type thing. You see what I'm saying? But he doesn't even matter here. Because that doesn't... The, the, but again, the us, them, and they will desperately claw at that brick wall to get anything they can so they don't have to acknowledge... So what does the bitch say? Uh, you want to talk about someone in the NFL sacrificing everything. Pat Tillman, well, excuse me, bitch. Um, he was going off to the military just like your damn Navy, your fucking Navy SEAL ass husband to fight for corporations, not for anybody in this bitch. So he wasn't fighting for anything by default that affects us. Thank you. And... Colin Kaepernick was never in the military, so why are you making a military comparison? Because you're desperate. NFL starting, and look, they put that on the capital. Not benched. Player who left to join the army and died for it. No, died because of it, dumb bitch. That is sacrificing everything for something you believe in. To go and kill people you don't know. But to stand up for your own people right here in this murdering, savage, fucking pit of the devil. Oh, that's nothing. Hmm? But I remind you. She is not alone. She speaks for them. She speaks for them. How about other, oh my God, warriors? Did she just use that word? You can't even picture somebody white and say the word warrior. It just doesn't fit. It's like, it's like when they put them in, in biblical clothing and stuff for these fake biblical movies when they were trying to represent them, play themselves in biblical stories that they clearly didn't exist in they don't even look right wearing it that's the same effect here with this warriors thing like i think i just got a i think i just lost a tooth <laughs> i don't know why i say that shit now i think i just lost a tooth i think i just lost a tooth i gotta check i think i just lost a molar i think i, just, I think it was a molar i can't uh, warriors who will not be on magazine covers. So now they're jealousy, y'all. Jealousy. Because you don't got to be a woman to know that Colin Kaepernick is a very attractive brother. Period. No hate. You see? So why would this line be there? Warriors will not be on magazine covers. Well, excuse me, whore, because um, Pat Tillman was on the cover of everything. Huh? That's why I know who he, who he is and what he looks like. Who will not 
get lucrative contracts and millions of followers from their, <laughs> from their actions who have truly sacrificed everything. Nah, you got caught up in the American lie. You see, they told you this is a great country and that you're fighting for something when you go kill people who haven't done a goddamn thing to you. <laughs> um, so you sacrificed for nothing. That's the real, tr that's, that's the hard truth. They did it because they believed in something. Yeah, the American lie. Take it from me, because she's all knowing. When I say they sacrificed everything, they also sacrificed the lives of their loved ones who will never be the same. That is sacrifice. Well, bitch, listen, we've, I just, I cannot name the list of people that y'all white asses have killed with your damn racist ass fucking murder soldiers. Huh? And their loved ones will never be the same either. But again, everybody, she's saying this with absolute disregard that this whole kneeling thing is because there's dead black corpuses out there killed by white racist people. Stay with me. You see the dismissive? It's not even in her consideration. Alas, none of theirs, all the way up to the orange tulip. What did he say when our brothers was kneeling with Colin? They're sons of bitches, said this white devil. This fake orange tulip. Huh? This is their president of their country that they elected who said that. He speaks for them. And so does she. Now. In fact. The bitch said she doesn't see. That Colin has sacrificed anything meaningful. Because black life doesn't matter. It's true that he may have lost some respect, you think? And, but only amongst white folks. And possibly his career, ah, uh, he couldn't get a job. Miss it. But he gained popularity and magazine covers. Cause remember, that's a major gain for him in their eyes because what? They want him destroyed for trying to legitimize black life. Hmm? This is why it's so easy for them to go to the continent of Africa and just inject our fucking people with Ebola and AIDS. This is what you're dealing with, everybody. I mean, what? you're dealing with catch that this is what you're dealing with it's true that he oh and magazine covers he likely wouldn't have gotten without getting on his knees that's supposed to be shade because it was a knee before that he sat on his ass so you see, there's a sexual, sexualizing fetishization of the brother now. Because she's mentioning magazine covers. He's on his knees. She's jealous. Ha ha ha. She's taking a look at Colin. She secretly wants him. No question in my mind. You understand? Getting on his knees, or as you say, believing in something, said the bitch. Then the bitch went on, also noted that Colin gained what is likely a very lucrative contract with Nike over his protest. Again, she's a dumb bitch because, as I already said, there was already a contract he had with them. And it was up for renegotiation. Nah. She doesn't know anything about business. Hmm? But she's an expert on who's dying for something and who's sacrificing for something, everybody. She should write a book on sacrificing. Huh? We'll all rush right out and buy it.
a very lucrative contract with Nike over his protest. Again, no mention of the hundreds, I said hundreds, of dead bodies killed by white racists under the color of authority. She don't give a fuck about that. They don't give a fuck. All I want to say is that they don't really care about us. I'm here to remind. All I want to say is that they don't really care about us. Beat me, hate me, you could never take me. Will me, thrill me, you could never kill me. Hit me, kick me, you could never get me. Chew me, sue me, you could never do me. All I want to say is that they don't really care about us. Huh? All I know is, I was actually in the market for some new kicks, at least for now. I've never been more grateful for Under Armour, said the whore. We're not reading her quote. It's not worth it. I'm over it. Listen, everybody. First, giving honor and all credit to Allah Azawajal, the creator of the heavens and the earth. The one who sustains the universe and all his creatures without fatigue. With whom is all mercy and with whom is all knowledge at all times. Who has allowed me a morsel of wisdom and knowledge to be able to bring my gifts and talents to this subject to fully discern this for my people listening to me now I have given you the first second and third act of this play everybody there's nothing else to be said This is why this is a firestorm. Because black life does not matter and is never supposed to matter to these people. Hold on, I gotta take a drink of my punch, y'all. That's that good black cherry. You understand that? <laughs> um. Anyway, I have done the dissertation for you. This is why it is the firestorm, and as African people, we should be. If you weren't aware of this, and you were able to grasp the information that that Allah has allowed me to share with you, you should be most vigilant most vigilant deeply disturbed by this knowledge the revelation of who these people are and what you're dealing with we can call it just the racists because it is racist but as I stated we can't delineate because we never see any of the good ones identifying themselves and saying no no we're the ones over here. We're, we're, we don't, we're not with this bullshit. Like, fuck her and we're over it. We don't see that. If somebody has seen it, please bring that evidence to me. Because I'm always happy to be wrong. Because the truth is the only thing that matters to me in my life. Period. It's the only thing that matters to me in life. Not, hear this. Nothing else matters. Nothing else is important, everybody, on the earth. Nothing. The truth is the only thing that is valid. It's the only thing that matters. It is lo más importante. Do you understand? La verdad is lo más importante en la vida de nosotros. And you need to get to that. You need to live by a policy of righteousness and truth. I've spoken nothing 
but the truth in this video. No conjecture. I don't need to pull anything out of my ass. I always tell you the truth is always strong enough to stand on its own. It is the most powerful force in the universe and is the closest thing to the divine because truth is one of the attributes of the one who gives us life right now. There is no deception or imperfection with the divine. So if you're going to draw closer to your maker, you got to draw closer to the truth. You cannot and will not, shall not have one without the other. It will not be done. It will not be done. It shall not be done. Hmm? You see, and in legal language, they make a delineation between shall and will. You see? Just to put it in simple terms, shall is final. Like, not happening. Will not? You got some wiggle room. I'll do a law class or something. I don't know. But there is a definite delineation in those words under the law of will and shall. And that's why I'm stressing them the way that I am now to help you understand the way that I speak. You know, it's kind of like when I've said to you before, when I say I'm telling you, that means that's firm and it's based in absolute fact and granite stone. Other times you'll hear me say, I suggest to you. That means based on a very educated guess. It's more likely this is true than not. I suggest to you and then I say whatever I'm saying. So, the most important thing now, if I didn't state it in the other video, is for our people to go forth and sit your children down, whatever age they are, even if they're grown, goddammit, sit their ass down. Let them know the true battle that is raging against them just behind the walls and just beneath the surface and not so much beneath the surface anymore because like I say the mask is off the mask is off do you understand me it's kind of like ants I always tell you, you never see a lone ant you see one ant you're you're under attack already they're just sending out scouts see if they come back there's already an entire legion of them amassed waiting to come to get whatever the fuck they have sourced and found. And they're never there randomly. If they're there, that's because there is something there. You see? So you need to let your children know what is behind the mask. And we need to start curtailing our relationships with these people accordingly. Because they don't have to like it and we don't have to like it. But the facts are what they are and we didn't make it that way. And our responsibility now is to protect ourselves. To protect ourselves from this evil. If this doesn't say it, nothing will. I'll see you soon.